Hello, this video will give the demand functions from five utility functions. This will be more of a reference video than a how-to video. I'm not going to go into the details of deriving the demand functions, but just list them. So we're going to start with Cobb Douglas. You have the Cobb Douglas utility function, uh, good x and good y, uh, raised to some positive exponents here, alpha and beta. Given that uh, general form, uh, the demand for good x will be given by this equation. M is income, and P subscript x is the price of good x. And the demand for good y will be given by this equation. Once again, M represents the consumer's income, and this time we have P subscript y, which is the price of good y. Uh, here's another example of the Cobb-Douglas. Uh, this time the, we'll let the exponents here sum to 1. So we could have like 0.4 for alpha and 0.6 for beta, for example. So, so long as the exponents sum to 1, our demand for good x will look like this. And our demand for good y will look like this. Again, P subscript X is the price of good X, price per unit of good X, and P subscript Y is the per unit price of good Y. M is income. All right, moving on to another type of utility function. Perfect complements. So utility is the minimum of X or Y. The demand for good X in this case will look like this. And the demand for good Y will equal the following. We'll do another example of perfect complements. Perfect complements, our second example. Utility is the minimum of A times X or B times Y. A and B are just some values uh, greater than zero. And in that case, demand for good X looks like this. Notice here, the, in front of the price of good Y term, we have A divided by B. And then the demand for good Y will look similar, but this time in front of the price of X term, we got B divided by A. So again, could use this as a reference to check your results if you're doing some homework or some problems. Moving on to another utility function, perfect substitute. So utility equals x plus y, units of good x plus units of good y. Uh, case one uh, would be a corner solution. If the price of good x is less than the price of good y, the consumer will spend all of his or her income on good X, and the demand for good X will look like this, just income divided by the price of good X. And the consumer will not buy any good Y, so the demand for good Y will be given by Y equals zero. Case two uh, is another corner solution, uh, but this time if the price of good Y is less than the price of good X, the consumer will buy nothing but good Y, so the demand for good X is zero, and the demand for good Y looks like this. And finally, our third case, if the price of good X equals the price of good Y, uh, units of good X and good Y uh, demanded uh, when summed together will just equal the income divided by the price. I'm just putting P here because P subscript X equals P subscript Y. There's just one price to talk about. All right, let's do another example of perfect substitutes. Here's another example of perfect substitutes. Uh, utility equals A times X plus B times Y. A represents the marginal utility of good X, and B represents the marginal utility of good Y. So case one is a corner solution. If the marginal utility per dollar of good X exceeds the marginal utility per dollar of good Y, the consumer should spend all of his or her income on good X. It provides more marginal utility per dollar. In that case, the demand for good X is given by income divided by the price of good X, and the demand for good Y is zero. 
Another possible corner solution here is if the marginal utility per dollar spent on good Y gives more bang for the buck is greater than the marginal utility per dollar spent on good X. In this case, a consumer will not buy any good X. The demand for good X will equal zero, and the demand for good Y will be given by income divided by the price of good Y. And our third possibility is that the marginal utility per dollar of good X equals the marginal utility per dollar of good Y. So in this case, you could spend all your income on good X or spend all your income on good Y or some combination in between. So we can perhaps write it like this. Uh, the demand for good X will equal alpha times income divided by the price of good X and the demand for good Y will equal one minus alpha times income divided by the price of good Y, where this alpha here, not to be confused with A, this alpha here is a value between zero and one. So if you spent half your income on X and half your income on Y, uh, alpha would just equal one half, and that would be the number of units of good X you could get and the number of units of good Y you could get. All right, moving on to another type of utility function. Here we're going to look at a constant elasticity of substitution, a CES utility function, taking this format right here. Given this uh, general functional form for a CES, the demand for good X will look like this. Uh, note this sigma here. What is sigma? Uh, we're going to define sigma as 1 divided by rho minus 1. And the demand for good y will be given as follows. Uh, M again is just income. And so we've got the price of good of y here raised to sigma. And as I mentioned before, we're going to define, define that as 1 divided by rho minus 1. Okay, moving on. Uh, we're going to look at a quasi-linear utility function of this form, a fairly popular form. Given that form, the demand for good X will look like this. And the demand for good Y will look something like this. If y is negative, if you happen to find that the value here for y is negative, you're going to be dealing with a corner solution. In that case, a consumer would spend all of his or her income on good x, and the demand for good x in that case would be given as just income divided by the price of good x, and the demand for good y would be zero. So again, uh, if if this happens to be a negative value for Y, the consumer will spend all of his or her income on X, and the demand for good X then would look like this. Another quasi-linear utility function. Utility equals a natural log of X plus Y. The demand for good X will be given as follows price of good Y divided by the price of good X. And the demand for good Y will look like this, income minus the price of good Y. And once again, if Y is negative, uh, if the price of good Y exceeds your income, the consumer will only buy units of good X, in which case the demand for good X would be given as income divided by the price of good X. And we'll zero out the demand for good Y. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.